Okay. Hey guys, what's up? I think I just recorded myself for 10 minutes talking into absolutely nothing. Um, I just realized that I forgot to click the go live button. Go figure. Anyway. Hi. I gotta do this all over again. Oh, it was just one button. Just one button to click and I didn't click. Anyway. Doing an impromptu live stream. Wasn't planning on doing a live stream, but considering what showed up in the mail and considering that I was reminded that I promised I'd be doing live streams, um, you know, during the, you know, every at least one every month, and I haven't been doing that yet, I figured I owed you guys one. I also owe you guys some videos. I mean, it's, it's funny that I've recently got over 10,000 subscribers, and I'm pretty sure people who are joining are like, okay, so we've joined, dude. What makes your channel so special? Show us the goods. And then radio silence for the next several days. <laughs> Those of you who know me know that real life tends to hit me in the back of the head pretty hard, like a brick. And let's just say when you happen to be an IT tech for a rather large company and Christmas is coming up and they really want to make sure that all their networking stuff and all their computers and everything is ready for that rush that's going to come in, yeah, your time gets used up a lot. And I barely have time to recuperate, much less doing stuff like this. But I wanted to do this, and I owe you guys that, so cool. Anyway, these things showed up in the mail today. And while I have an idea of what they are, they are still something of a surprise for me. Because I wasn't expecting them. You guys know already that I fairly recently did a review of the so-called LK5. Five fairly historically accurate Chinese straight swords, or dian, from, that are supposed to be based on weapons from the Han Dynasty period. Um, the guy who helped to develop them, um, LK Chen, is an enthusiast of weaponry and martial arts from that time period, and he felt that weapons from that are on the market right now aren't very accurate. And he got tired of waiting for other people in the market to put out more accurate weapons, and so he decided to do it himself. The LK-5 that I reviewed are rather unique Chinese swords in that they are very light, but still pretty effective. They cut really well, they're very well balanced, there's still enough of a feeling of presence in the blade to do good cuts, but they're extremely nimble so that you can get that perfect point control. And if you guys have seen videos on that guy's own channel on how these weapons are supposedly used, you notice that they're very thrust oriented. So being able to get the point where you want it is very important, and those weapons are well balanced for that but they also got a really good authoritative cut as well. I like the weapons, I reviewed them, and I thought that was that. Um, I have been in some correspondence with LK Chen, and I've been in correspondence with, with his Western contact, who, who, was, who was the guy who got me to be able to handle the swords in the first place. And um, we had a really good rapport. I, you know, I gave them my opinions on the weapons, what they could do to improve, you know, what, what I thought was awesome. And I thought that was that. You know, I, I got to review them, I got to handle them. From this point on, you know, they're going to, like, just develop their line, and that's that. And I knew they were planning on developing other weapons later on, and I just thought, like, I was going to be like every other customer. When they come up with their new line, if I like it enough, I'll pay for it and review it and let you guys know what, what's going on. And that was that. I, I That's all I thought was going to happen. Until about three days ago when I checked my email, and they said that there's packages heading my way from China. And I instantly knew who most likely is sending that my way. Because I don't know anyone else in China would be sending me stuff. But I didn't ask for them. That's the thing I need to stress. I did not ask for them. I wasn't like, hey, I heard you guys are making new weapons. Can you send them? I'm like, no. I'm just like, you know, I was lucky to handle the other ones. Don't push my luck. But they showed up on my doorstep today. So we're going to unbox them, see what they're like, and I'll give my first impressions on, on the weapon ring. Um, you guys probably have an idea of what it is, though, because if you've been to their website, you know that they've been developing new stuff. One is a Handao, which I'm really curious about. And the other one, I think, is a hook shield. I'm guessing it is, because this is a, this one down here is a rather bulky item, and it's kind of heavy. So I'm assuming that's what this is. I don't know what this is. I'm assuming this is the Handao, though, which I'm already really surprised with, because... Look at that. Like, you see how short that is? I mean, I guess for a sword, it's not really short. But after I handled those really long beasts of theirs, 
Um, I was expecting the Hondao to also be as long. And in fact, the prototype Hondao that I do have from them is pretty long. And then I get this, and I'm like, huh. But let's see what this one looks like. I've yapped long enough, so let's dig in and see what this one looks like. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to hit the mic. For anybody wearing headphones, I apologize. So, first we're going to find where the seam is. And, yeah, right there. Go right there. This is a really good knife, by the way. It was a gift from a friend of mine and a GM that I used to game with way back. We need to set up a game again, dude, if you're watching this. We need to continue our game. That storyline has been um, halted for way too long. But yeah, he, this was a gift that he had sent me, and I really, really like this knife. It's not exactly one that I can easily carry around here in the state that I'm living in. I mean, it's... I mean, look at this. And, you know, in the sheath and all that, so... I, I doubt if I was walking around with this on my hip that I would um, be allowed to walk around freely, so to speak. Who knows? Hmm, this is interesting. So, uh, I'll put this down here. Man, this is really small. Well, not really, really small. Like, it looks like it's like Wakazashi length. You see that, guys, right? And the profile is rather diminutive. It's pretty small. But it's got some heft to it. Like, I, I can feel the heft to this. You know? It's nicely wrapped, you know, bubble wrap to keep it protected. I could tell they listened. I was saying that if you're going to be shipping overseas, you really want to make sure that you properly are packaging these. They're doing that. I mean, you've got the styrofoam, which, you know, they don't have a, like, it's not styrofoam in a box. It's just the styrofoam, I guess, to cut costs. But the styrofoam helps. And then you've got the bubble wrapping and, you know, the perfectly secured. They're trying to make sure that this stuff, when it comes overseas, it's not going to be damaged. They want to make sure it stays in um, good condition. And I have gotten a couple of private emails from people who have told me that they've ordered a um, some swords from them and that they showed up in good condition. So, nice to see that um, LK Chen's company, they're, they're really paying attention to good um, customer service and quality control. But I'm not surprised, to be honest. Again, um, my dealings with them have always been pretty good. And they seem to really care a lot about how they're being perceived, you know, as a company. Which is good. I mean... Lately, there are a lot of companies that don't seem to care much about how they're perceived as long as they get their money. Like, they know their marketing department will more or less hoodwink people to buy their crap again no matter what they do. Activism <coughs> blizzard. So, you know, it's... Yeah. We don't really need to get too much into that. Okay, so... Already, like, the way it's feeling in my hand, I have a feeling I'm really going to like this. I really like the sword bag, by the way. They, they have... These guys have some really nice sword bags. They're not just the plain old sword bags or, like, yellow ones that I, I tend to see other companies do. They just, you know, they... You, know, you get these are nice little you know, beautiful phoenix and dragon designs on them, and the tassels are, you know, decent enough quality. Like, they're really trying to... They, they, they want to make sure that their products are presented as good as, you know, they think that they're worth. Like, there's a lot of passion, it seems, behind this company and the weapons that they want to put out. Um, and I think it really shows. It really shows in how they, you know, how they sell the weapons, the way the website looks, the way the weapons themselves look, the amount of work that goes into making these. Wow. And then this is, of course, perfectly wrapped up. I like this. I wish you guys, like, this, this is one of those moments where I sort of wish I could pass this around so you guys can feel what I'm feeling. Like, it's so small, but there's still some weight to it. Not, like, crowbar weight, but, like, still a sense of, if I whip this out, I'm not afraid that it's going to fall apart on me. But it's still really diminutive. It's really small. And, of course, they have it perfectly wrapped in, you know, shrink-wrapped in plastic. So, again you know, that care that they want to make sure that it comes in one piece and doesn't get damaged. Oh, and I'm sorry, I just realized that you got all these comments showing up in here and I haven't been paying attention. I, I apologize for that. Um, someone's playing Destiny 2 on Stadia. Oh boy, well, I don't have Stadia, but I do have Destiny 2. Who knows, maybe I'll jump into that with you. But yeah, let's, I'm wasting too much time. We want to see what the blade looks like, right? 
we can we can look at all this anytime. We want to see the blade. I'm gonna poke it here. I don't want to scratch the finishings or anything like that because I know um like they're actually you know using some real lacquer on the scabbard. I like the feel of this. Let me show that up close. Like the this is really tight. Like it looks really tight, but now that I'm actually gripping it. I don't know how well you guys can see that. The lighting in here, I'm sorry, it's not all that good. I should bring my lantern out so you can see it better. But yeah, you see that? How tightly wrapped that is? But it's not budging a millimeter at all. It's, it's just, and it feels really good in the hand. It's, it's, it's fairly small, but it's just got just enough so that, you know, my fingers can get in there. And you, of course, you got that ring, which is typical of these types of weapons. Yeah, and I'm liking, yeah, the quality of the scabbard's pretty nice. This piece is also rather interesting. Right there, you see that? And it's it's not budging at all. This is not loose at all. This is nice and secure. I don't really see this too much. It looks similar to what you might see on other um, dowel scabbards. You know, it's somewhat similar, but it's also very practical looking. I really like that. So, and then of course here, notice, by the way, the lack of a handguard, so to speak. It's just a metal collar, and that's it. Which I know is going to turn some people off. I'm used to this sort of thing. In fact, I kind of like streamlined designs for swords, but that's just me. So, um, let's see what the blade looks like, right? I mean, that's what we're here for. So, Ooh. Well, well-oiled, but that's typical. That blade looks sharp as hell. And, of course, that beautiful pattern in the steel, which I've come to expect from these guys. I also like the fact that, the, you know, they got that the collar there is covered in um, brass. I'm wondering if they might want to do that for their Dien as well, like down the line. But then again, I don't think that's historically accurate. Th they'd have to tell me. I, that's something I'm trying to research myself. But I do still like, you know, the metal collar there. And This is really small, though. I really was expecting their first one to be much bigger than this. This looks like, this definitely looks like a personal defense knife. You know what I mean? Like, this is definitely a person, like, like something that you would just carry with you no matter what. Like, like again, similar to a Japanese wakazashi, which, you know, if you go to someone's home, they want you to put the, the katana away, but you can still keep the wakazashi by you. That's what this feels like. And I wouldn't be surprised if some expert in the crowd is going to be like, yeah, that's exactly what they would carry this, with this one all the time. <laughs> you know? It's, it's a good size. It's, it's a good fighting size. Like, I'm used to longer, but... This doesn't feel too short to me. This doesn't just feel like a defensive dagger, a defensive knife. Though technically, it is a knife. Again, Chinese category of weapons. If it's double-edged, it tends to be a sword. If it's single-edged, no matter how huge the freaking thing is, they call it a knife. That's what Dao means. So, I really like this, though. Um, man, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see the pattern on that. I'm trying my best with the lighting I have in here. But... That's, you know, the, and the blade profile is also rather interesting. You see, again, the somewhat shallow, you know, um, kind of like, like the hollow ground, very shallow hollow ground on the blade. But then you get that sort of almost chisel-like edge right there. And it's not too small of, of um, like the edge itself, the amount of surface area for the edge, it's just enough so that I think it will cut pretty well. It's not too short. It, you know, it's somewhat similar. In fact, it might be a little bit wider than what I've seen on the den. So it's going to give a more authoritative cut. And of course, with the thick spine back here, it's got enough weight to really go through. You see that? That's a nice, thick spine there. And then you got that really sharp edge. So there's a, there's a good amount of mass going to it. But this thing feels... It's amazing. Like, despite the fact you get that nice, thick spine there... This thing wants to move. Like, wow. This thing really wants to move. But I can imagine, like, if there's any of you guys out there that practice um, with any type of knife-type defense weaponry, like, any of you guys are used to using um, messers or falchions, or any of you guys who practice Chinese martial arts and you more you like the doll, you would love this. I get the feeling you guys would love playing around with this. It is so nimble. It is so freaking... Nimble. What's the balance point of this? Huh. 
That's where. Wow. You see that, guys? Wow. Jesus. You can really get this thing where you want it to go. I am liking this a lot. This thing is very nimble. You, you know what also I get, the feeling I get from this? And I, I really need to get confirmation on this, but this is my own personal, like, uh, hypothesis here. I've always felt that the original Dao, Han Dao onward, remember, they're all straight. And I'm thinking, remember, they started out using Dian on the battlefield, and then they moved over to Dao, but these weapons were still straight. So I always got the feeling that they were still employing these more or less like Dian, using, like, the Dian techniques that they were using at the time, they were using with these weapons, but probably a little bit more cut-oriented, since, you know, you got that single edge and that heavier spine to really go through your target. But because the balance is still Dian, like, it's still nimble enough to apply it that way. And in fact, I know at least with the Goose Quill Saber, that weapon was designed to be used with both Den and Dao techniques in mind. So I'm really getting the feeling that this right here is like that proto crossover weapon. Like this was probably handed over to someone who's like, look, we know you're used to using Den. We're switching over the Dao with these weapons. They cut much better, but you can still do your thrusts and quick parry movements and, you know, dodging moves like that. Like all that is what this weapon feels like. Like, it feels like that's how it wants to be employed. Like, you can still do those quick, you know, movements there, there, and then if you really needed to deliver that cut, you can, you know? Man, I like this. Let's, t let's see the edge. I wanna see how good the edge is on this. Um, just hear it, wow, wow, wow. Jesus Christ, wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Huh. Oh my god. This is just Oh man. Looks like I got something new to play with. What wow. I'm trying to show you guys, um I really want you guys to see the pattern on these, because on this, these, like I'm holding multiples. Like, do you see, like, can you see the, um, the folding pattern on this? It's so beautiful. But all, to be honest, every last sword that I've handled from this company so far is, you know, the, the pattern is just gorgeous. And this is no exception. I just love the shape of the blade. I love just how nimble this ring is. Just wow. The scabbard also, like, you know, what? let's, let's. Oh I, man, I, I, it's really hard for me to put this thing back in. I, just, I gotta locks in place beautifully. It just locks right in, and it just looks so flush against the scabbard too. Like I really like this design. I really like this design. No, nothing shaking, no moving parts. Just really nice. Got that nice little, you know, sword hanger right there. It'll put your belt through, like if you're going to be wearing it behind. Something like that. I can really imagine somebody like wearing it like that, you know, and then pulling it out that way. Or, I mean, of course you don't you know, want it here. And of course there's always just simply holding it. Man, this went, wow. Man, I want this thing. This thing is so freaking quick. It's amazing. Just, huh. All right, all right, all right, all right. We got that other package that we need to look at. But first impressions on this one. They really outdid themselves. It's a beautiful piece. And just long enough so that, you know, you can get some basic sword practice in. Wow. I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing a proper review of this where I can give off some proper measurements of, like, how long the blade actually is, how thick the spine is. I have a micrometer around somewhere. If I, could, if I see the micrometer immediately, I might measure certain things, but just wow. Wow, 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 wow. What the fuck just happened? Oh my god.
Okay, wait, can you guys still see me? Can you guys still see me? The hookup with my net, um, internet connection, it literally just cut off. And then I tried to sign back on, and it made... What's going on? Reconnected again. You're telling me. Somebody just said this must be frustrating. What? I think baby Steam is downloading something while it's off. That's probably what's going on. So, you don't mind if I just, well, turn off Steam for now, kid. <laughs> no, 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 no. Steam wasn't on. So okay. I don't know how that works, but I'm going to stop all downloads on All right. Your... Please do that. Thanks. <sighs> Ow. You can't say that this isn't live. <laughs> you can't say that I'm plan this whole thing out that everything's on a script, right? And I'm paying like $120 for the fastest freaking internet speed. That, never mind. Enough of that. What I was trying to say before the constant disconnects, I'm going to be reviewing this. My first impressions is that I like the build quality. I like how nimble this is. I really like how awesome this is. Um... The one thing that surprises me, it's not a negative, but the one thing that surprised me is the fact that the very first Honda they decided to make was this one. Again, look at the size. I mean, granted, maybe I'm not really a good representation of comparing sizes because I'm only five foot seven, but it's still pretty small. Like I'll put it on the ground here, and I mean, wow. That, I mean, I'm really surprised that the very first Honda they decided to put out is something this small. Because I was expecting them to come out with those big freaking honking ones. Well, not the two-handers, but there are one-handed Honda that like come up to here. I got a prototype version of it. it. It's and that one's pretty massive. I'm guessing. If I had to make a guess, I do know that weight was a concern, and probably they're right now trying to find a way of forging these with the right weight and balance at the right size. And maybe they started out with the smaller ones because that might be a little bit easier for them. And I'm probably completely wrong about that. And everyone, no, there's a completely different reason. You don't know anything about sword manufacturing. So, um, But yeah, my first impressions are that I'm really, um, I'm impressed with the weight. I'm impressed with how nimble it is. The blade is sharp as hell. I do like the minimalistic design, but I, I tend to be into minimalistic designs. Um, if I'm going to, I'm sounding too much like an enthusiast, so I guess... I mean, this is not a straight-up review, but I want to at least see if there's anything I can ding it for instead of just simply sounding like some crazy fanboy. Mm. I mean, so far, the build quality is pretty good. This hasn't been going loose. I'm not noticing anything shaky. I guess, and this is my own personal preference, while I am, like, charmed by how small it is, I preferably would like it a little bit longer. But that's just because of my own personal preferences. I, I tend to like my blades at least around 28 inches or so. This seems to be much smaller than that. If I had to venture a guess, and why would I venture a guess when I actually have a freaking measuring tape right over here? <laughs> actually, why am I using the cloth one when I got this one? Let's find out how long this is. <laughs> Okay, so we're going with inches here. Sorry that I'm sticking with American barber, um, barbaric metric systems. Um, yeah, this looks like a 23 inches. A 23 inch blade. That is re that's definitely Wakazashi length. That's like Wakazashi um, ranges of, you know, sword lengths. Anyway. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My girlfriend in the back. She's going to be heading out, hanging out with her friends. I love how sharp this thing is, by the way. This is like... Whew. Whew. This might be sharper than um, a couple of the Hanjin that I've tried out. But I know that they said they were making sure that all their blades are coming out super sharp from, you know... From, well, I shouldn't say from this point on. Ever since I did that review, they said they're making sure that all their blades are sharp. They're not lying. But and enough of this. I, I was expecting to open up the other package by now, so... Let's open up the other package and see what's in it. Because I'm really curious as to what is going to come out of this. I really don't know what to expect out of this one. So, I mean, let, I guess we can come out with some guesses. I mean, the website, you know, maybe it's the hook shield. 
Maybe it's a laser gun. Maybe it's parts to some kind of exotic engine. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's liquid Schwartz and they just had to put it in a weird crazy box to make people not realize that it's just several cans of liquid Schwartz. Um, maybe it's body parts and in that case, oh my god, they're going to come after me. <laughs> Because I'm recording this live, and I pull out some kidneys, and they're like, oh my god! FBI rolls in. Then you see me on the news. Black guy shot by cops. We thought he was such a nice man, but it turns out he had a criminal, you know... He was a criminal all along, importing body parts. You can never trust them! This thing is like just, it does not want to be unwrapped. <laughs> well, I just keep, it just keeps unraveling and unraveling and unraveling and unraveling. This looks like some kind of light tarp material. It's like, it's like woven. And I'm not really too sure, like, oh, looks like it's two things. Or, or is it one thing? No, it's two things, I think. I don't know. Well, that's what we're, we're here to find out. I'm not supposed to like not know for long, right? Otherwise, why is this an unboxing video? What am I looking at here? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This looks like it, it looks like what I expected it to be. Though, actually, I might be wrong about it being two things. Yeah, yeah, it's not two things. It, it looks like they might have taken. Oh, now I see what they did. Never mind. I see what they did. This, this is just one thing. It is the hook shield, and I'm about to get it out of this mess in a moment, but it looks like because of the weird shape of it, they had to, like, pack extra styrofoam in there to keep the hooks from catching on stuff. So, it's a lot to cut out. Like, I got tape to cut and cords to cut. They really wanted to make sure this came in one piece. Again, that, you know... They did say they wanted to make sure that, you know, from this, you know, after some of the mishaps I had with the other swords, they wanted to make sure that this did not come and damage at all. I am glad this knife is sharp. <laughs> this thing just does not want to come out. Like, I cut here, and then there's another spot to cut, and then I cut there, and there's another spot to cut, and then there's a cord here, and then there's a tie there. I'm going to end up being like, you know, that really impatient kid at Christmas who just rips everything apart, but I don't really want to do that when I know there's sharp hooks on this thing. I'd rather not bleed on you guys live. So. Oh, wait, there's two of them. So I guess I was right. There were two things. Kudos to anybody who catches that reference. And okay, okay, I finally got one of them out. So, yeah, this is one of those hook shields. Looks pretty simple enough. I mean, it's it's a hook shield. I don't know what else to say about it. I'm probably even holding it wrong. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that this is supposed to be up. And, you know, the way to play it. I mean, you would think that maybe it's supposed to be this way instead. But I don't know. It just feels a little bit more like you should wear it well, this way. But I'm not, I'm not versed with this. I, I don't really know the first thing about how to use these things. So, your guess is as good as mine. Even though the dude has videos on YouTube right now. Shut up. Shut up. Honestly, though, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it other than that it looks like it's pretty well constructed. I mean, it's... It looks like a solid iron. You know, it's, it's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, re, it's 
this is not like super duper decorations or anything like that. It's just a solidly built set of hooks with, you know, something to protect your hand. Or it's, it's almost like a like a hooked buckler, I guess. Except I think bucklers are bigger than this, you know? Um, like, I mean, okay, I don't know how to use these. I don't. And I'm not even going to try to pretend like, you know, I'm in the Matrix and it can be downloaded in my brain or anything like that. But I'm assuming, because I remember a little bit from the videos that I saw in that, like, you're supposed to be holding this, like, this is your defensive weapon. And you're supposed to be holding this out to catch the other person's weapon, and then you just come in. So, you know, it'll be like, you know, protect yourself with this, hook their weapon, move it out the way, and then come in and thrust. That's what I'm guessing. That, that, that's what I remember. And I'm assuming since you're trying to catch the other person's tool, whether it be a polearm or another sword, this would be out in front. And this would be here. Which, considering how many times I've seen in Chinese martial arts, the sword weapon, whether it be a dao or a den, I've seen certain stances where it's held here and their hand is forward, but there's nothing in it. Like, I'm sure you guys remember, like, there's, if you guys have seen Chinese martial arts, particularly with the dao, <coughs> you'll see them like this. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, wouldn't you want your weapon in front of you? But they got stances like that. But if you put something in your hand, then now that makes a lot more sense, see? So, you know, it's, you're waiting to, like, parry that other weapon out the way, and then you would just come in. Um, that's what I'm guessing the most basic motion for this is. But how to properly hook with it, like motions you can do in combinations with your weapons, I, would, I, I don't know them offhand. It's something that I would have to fool around with, which would upset a lot. I'm pretty sure <laughs> LK Channel would just be looking at me like, so I'm not even going to try. I'd rather just, like, correspond with him to see how these things are supposed to be employed, but yeah, uh, I mean, it is for what it's made for, yeah, I mean, it's just a hook to catch the other person's weapon and protect your hand, protect your body. I do have to question this. This, I don't know how much these are going to go for, but this isn't cord. Like, this isn't you know, like leather or anything. It just looks like tape. Like, and then some padding here to protect your hand. I, I'm not too sure that's the sort of thing that somebody who's be spending money is going to want to see. They're going to, I mean, it would be the sort of thing that we would do to our own weapons after we got it. But I don't know how well somebody would react to getting something in the mail where the handle is wrapped in tape um, around foam to, you know, be a softer grip. I, I, it, that's kind of questionable to me. I, the overall build of this, quality of this, yeah, this is solid. I mean, it's not rattling or anything like that. I mean, I would not be afraid of, say, catching another weapon with this. This isn't bending, you know? Like, this isn't flimsy. It's just this does end up sort of, in my opinion, giving it a little bit of a cheap look. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm over-exaggerating, if, if, if I'm just being too elitist here, let me know. But that's sort of, that's sort of how I feel about it. And, and overall, I'm, I'm liking this. It's curious. I wouldn't mind learning how to use this thing. It's just that is a little... I'm not so sure if people would, be, would appreciate something like that on stuff that they bought. But then again, it also depends on the price, too. So, And keep in mind, these are all handmade, you know. Yeah. This is the other one. Uh, come on. I shouldn't need a knife for this. Oh, this one's bigger. And it's a somewhat different design. You guys see that? Obviously you do. Um, like, this is the other one. And then there's this one. This one is like... This one, I think, is really made for catching bigger weapons. This one might be more for, like, swords. I'm probably going to get corrected. But this, this one is probably a little bit more personal. This one, yeah. Also, I just noticed that the hooks are somewhat different. Like, this one, you know, it's just got a basic bend. You know, just, just, this just a bit of a curve. And this here, 
you start out with it and it bows back a little bit before curling forward. And this is shorter than this. So that's telling me, yeah, then this has to be up here. This could also be a way of catching the weapon as well. Like if it gets closer to the hand, then you can kind of pull down. But this longer hook is telling me that you really want to extend with that. And you, it probably was made more for catching longer weapons. See? Like that. And then you got, of course, you got your other one in the other hand, your sword or doll or whatever in this hand. And then you catch and then strike. Or like catch, keep in front and strike. I kind of like this one better than that one. I don't know, I just do. I guess it's because it's a little bit more unique. Well, that's unique too. I mean, obviously, how many of these have you seen? But I, I, I guess it's just, you know, having the shorter one here, the longer one there, you know, and the, the interest. This seems to be a little bit bigger for the hand. I don't know. This, I really like this one. I do notice the same thing with the hand. The, um, the, um, the guard, again, it's like tape with foam. Or, I don't know if it's foam, but it's definitely something to make it so that you're not, you know, you're not just holding solid iron. It's a little bit softer in the hand. Um, again, not to show how I feel about it. I mean, it gets the job done, you know? It gets the job done. I mean, it's, it doesn't hurt the hand. It's not going anywhere. you got a decent enough grip. Um, one thing I will... Um, Again, I don't really know the proper way to employ these. I, I got some ideas, but I, you know, I'm not trained in its use. I do know this much, though. Um, as far as um, who used these, like, these were used during the Han Dynasty, but they weren't standard issue troop weapons or defensive tools for the troops. Like, they were using shields. You know, because shields work. They, they just do. You know, nice shield in one hand, sidearm in the other, or you got your pole arm, whatever, and, and you know, just block them, you know, just chop them down, and they're, they're diminished, and you move on to the next, right? This apparently was used by more specialized fighters. So this is more of like a specialist's tool. Um, they were, I, I heard they were used in duels. Like, I read that they... Um, they sort of similar to like you know the way someone I guess um, someone using a rapier or a side sword would have a defensive dagger in the other hand, and in this case you got like a, this sort of buckler slash hook type thing that you can use to defend and redirect and then strike with the other weapon. Like th this, I think was used. This was more of a personal defense tool, but apparently it was also used by specialists and or mercenary troops, not necessarily a standard troop weapon. So. We now have kind of like two reasons why this weapon seems so rare and so unique looking. One is the fact, well, there are Chinese weaponry and Chinese tools tend to look unique no matter where you go. But two, also, even in, during that period, I'm not going to say they were completely rare, but they weren't as widely used as, say, a shield would have been. Mm. You know... I say this for Arizona's. Yeah, they're not exactly the most, the big, biggest quality tea drink you can buy, but they get the job done enough. I'm thirsty. The 69 cents. Why not? So yeah, that's that's the unboxing. Um, I do like these. I mean, I was curious about these for a while, and now holding them in my hand, I mean, they just they just look like solid tools. You know what I mean? Like they're just these no nonsense defensive parrying tools. There's nothing fancy about them. There's no, no, nothing fake or, you know, ridiculous or over-embellished about them. They just, look, do you want to you wanna keep something away from you and redirect it here? That, that's what this is made for. What else do you want? <laughs> like, so in, in that sense, I like that kind of practical side of them. They're, they're just, you know, it's, it's fashioned bits of iron made to, you know, keep you from getting effed up by the other guy. It, the only thing I can ding them for is, again, this. Like this, I'm not too sure what somebody... Again, I don't know how much these are going for. I should look at the website um, to see. Give me a moment here. Oh, man, I got all this styrofoam to clean up. Okay, yep, boom. You can tell I've been to a site a bit when I only have to type in two letters, and this is the first one that pops up. So I'm going to look up... Yeah, Gurang. That's what they're called, right? 
Gorong. The enigmatic Han Gorong. Oh, and I got a video right there showing um, how it's used. Oh, and then drills over here in New Jersey. That's cool. So, and of course they're showing old, like they're showing um, old relief carvings and pictures of how, you know, people using it back then. There's um, like one image right here. Someone's using um, a pole arm and a person's defending themselves with the, the Gorong and attacking with their um, hondo. I'm assuming it's a hondo because there's a ring at the end. Rather interesting. So, yeah, and they're showing two different types here. Like, they, they got like several pictures of them. Well, rather cool. Um, but I'm trying to see. They got Enigma 1, Enigma 2, and. What's Enigma 1? I'm trying to see prices here. Um, or maybe they're not offering it yet, and I just happen to have gotten my hands on a prototype. That might be what it is. Now that I'm thinking about it. Recreating it, researching it. Yeah, I'm not really seeing. I'm seeing their um, their weapons and and they're, they're playing around with it and yeah. Yeah, and then them in development. I see they got several prototypes. That could be what this is. Um, which, if that is what's going on, then I can understand why the handle looks the way it does. And if that's the case, then. Take what I, you know, forget what I'm saying. Well, I shouldn't say forget, but yeah, it's personally, I like these. I want to play around with these. I need somebody to play around with, like, you know, testing, you know, how effective that could be. I will say that they are, they feel substantive. Again, they don't feel overly heavy. You're not going to feel like it's like, Ugh! you know, it's not like that. Um, but they are, they do have some weight to them. So if you got weak hands or weak wrists, it might take a little getting used to, but any of you guys who, and I know several of you guys either practiced HEMA or some of you, who, there might be some SEA guys in the crowd. Those of you guys who are used to using like long swords and shields, this is going to be nothing for you. Like it's, you're used to that weight here and you're used to being able to, you know, move, you know, well with those type of um, the offensive and defensive tools. And that's really what this, this just feels like a good, solid defensive tool. No more, no less. Hmm? Oh, see you later. Bye, baby. Let me know what's going on tonight, right? Okay. Take care. Have fun. Careful. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's going out. Um, yeah, the hook looks like it's just big enough to, like, get the other weapon out the way. You know? It's not meant to, like... This is not a pointy hook. You're not going to be using this to, like, sink into somebody's flesh and pull it in. No, this is just to, like, look, something's coming in, damn it, and you move it out the way. And this is bent up just enough so that it won't just slide off and come at back at you. It's just enough to guide it out the way so that you can have enough time to strike. But it's just made solidly for that purpose, and that's what I really like. You know? Yeah, I like these. I, I think these would be really interesting. I think, honestly, considering the passion that LK Chen has for Han style weaponry and Han style, you know, fighting styles, he really should consider coming up with some type of instructional videos. Like, I know he's putting out like basic information about these things and Han Dynasty weaponry on the actual website and on his channel. So you can just go on there and see the drills that he's doing and things like that. There's nothing really instructive per se. It's more informative. Like, this is how it's used. This is what you can expect to do with it. This is the correct way to do it, and so on and so forth. Um, which is cool. But I'm thinking that if you're going to be selling these, someone's going to buy it and then go, okay, now what? Like, I mean, granted, you know, I'm pretty sure there's martial artists watching this right now, I'm sure. And you guys are probably thinking in your head, oh, I know exactly how to use that. Or, I got an idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be like, you know, I can get my hands on this and I can do all sorts of things with this, you know? And, yeah, that's that's definitely true. But um, for those who don't really have that sort of training or for those people who, whenever they see something like this, they have a hard time working their minds around it, having something instructional might be a good idea. So maybe LK Chen might consider coming up with some kind of, some type of instructional video or some type of book or something like that you know, giving people an idea of how to work with this. Because it seems to me like he's not trying to just recreate the weaponry and the tools. 
He's trying to recreate the fighting styles themselves. And if you're going to be doing that, then you need more than just the tools. You need the instruction manuals that go along with them, so to speak. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I like them. Just don't know about the handles. I just, I just don't know if people are going to be willing to look past the handles. I kind of can. And that's only because I've been around dudes who have, like, had to rewrap. I've been around SCA guys, and people around in the SCA, they rewrap their stuff all the freaking time. This is sort of reminding me of that. Or people, I've actually seen people who, after a while, um, both, like, whether it's Western martial artists or Japanese style swordsmen or Chinese style swordsmen, I've seen sometimes they'll have a favorite sword or favorite tool, and it gets cracked or messed up, and they'll just rewrap it or retape it or, like, put a new one on there. And now that thing really looks like it was, like, homemade. But it still works. That kind of is what this is reminding me of. Which is why I guess it's not bothering me all that much. But I would think... Un like, if you see this as a company that hand makes all their own stuff. Which actually they kind of do. They, they, they do. Then maybe this won't bother people that much. But if you look at them like a company. Like, you know, like... Like, like for instance, if Hanway was putting out stuff like this. I'm pretty sure somebody was going to complain. You know what I mean? Or like if... Um, Actually, now that I'm mentioning Hanway, I already know some people have been dinging and they say that their quality is not as good as it used to be. That's a whole other can of worms. But you know what I mean, right? You, you get what I'm saying. Like, this might turn some people off. But I'm not really too sure what they could do to fix that without increasing their costs. So, I don't know. I mean, it gets the job done. It doesn't really, it doesn't feel bad. It feels pretty secure. And since, again, my hand is not rubbing against, you know, metal, you know, that's, that's, that's fine. I don't know. I guess, I guess you know, to sound like, you know, a certain hardcore capitalist or something, let, let the market decide. I guess that's what it has to be. All right, so, uh, that's the unboxing. I'm overall impressed, especially with that Honda. Wow. Just wow. Oh, man. That's really making me wish I had more free time so I could, like, set up the cutting stand and go to town with it and, like, like try to work on some basic doll drills with this. Man, this is just... It's like a little beast. I really like this thing. It's really... Wow. And honestly, the hook things, I do like those, too. Actually holding them on my hands now, I want to learn how to use them. Even if not necessarily at a very high level, at least so I'm familiar with its use and being able to, like, move things aside. I have some idea. Look, I've played around with sickle swords before. Um, and actually, that's the other curious thing about this. This is sort of reminding me, like, almost like a prototypical tiger hook sword or something like that. Like, there's a lot of, like, you, we see different instances of hook-like weapons in Chinese weaponry, whether it be pole arms or, you know... Melee, you know, hand, one handed what melee weapons or what have you. You you see this kind of evolution of these hook like tools that they'll use to either catch other people's weapons or hook the person in. So I'm seeing this as an earlier version of that, which I find very interesting. It's, it's kind of fascinating to me. So let me clean this mess up. Um, put this in the garbage here, which you guys can't see. Ugh. That is definitely going to have to be taken out later, and then of course. I'm going to have to vacuum because we got styrofoam bits all over the place. All right. Um, hmm. Oh, somebody found the price. Cool. It's $160 a bit steep for that, somebody says. The photo showed different than a cleaner handle. Okay, good, good, good. If it's going for a cleaner handle, I could see that. Um... For being spy. I, I'm, by the way, I've been completely out of the conversation that you guys are having over there. If you guys ask me questions or anything like that, I missed them because I was back there handling tools. Um, not to mention, also, well, well, I'm mentioning it now. Um, when it comes to small print at a certain distance, I kind of need these now. It's slowly been creeping up on me. I don't like it. Um, but to be fair, I can actually read it fine from here. It's more when it's closer. Like, just go, going to my personal life a little bit. From here, I can actually see the chat pretty much fine. 
I can read it just fine. Like I see you got the prototype of that shield. The photos on the website on the web show different cleaner handles. Is it the doll is two hundred dollars? That's a, not a bad price for that actually. Um, but once I go over here, believe it or not, the text is now looking fuzzy. You would think it would come out clearer that I'm close, but now that I'm here, it's fuzzy. And as soon as I put this on, it's clear again. And this is hard for me to understand. I mean, it's hard for me to accept because I'm so used to having sharp vision. I've had it ever, you know, for a very long time. I've always had really, really good vision, but now at my age, that old is creeping up on me, and I hate it quite a bit. Mm. But we still have some time. It's 5.53. I do need to start, um, get with the cooking. But I wouldn't mind answering a few questions here and there. It's been a long time since I've done a live stream. I owe you guys a live stream. So I'm going to scroll back a little bit and see if I missed anything major. I, I can't promise to answer every question. But anything that look, I can catch that looks rather interesting, I will um, see what I can find. Um... All right, someone here says, I'm interested to see how the doll compares to a typical machete. This is a lot more nimble feeling in the hand than a machete, at least in my opinion. I'm, it's not like I've handled machetes often, but machetes to me always felt like they're just chopping knives. You know what I mean? Like Some feel good in the hand, others just feel rather forward balanced, and others feel very light and not too substantive. Like, you know, if you whip that blade in the wrong thing, it's going to crack... That just feels more solidly built and feels very quick in the hand. It does not feel like a machete. Let's just put it that way. Um, someone's asking why did they move to Dull? Um, they wanted to, st um, from what I remembered with my correspondence, they first wanted to start out with the Den because that they feel like the straight sword was at its highest level during the Han Dynasty, like its use and the way they were making it. And then it's been a slow decline since, at least in the eyes of LK Chen. So they were focusing on that, but then later on they were like, you know, a lot of people seem to be interested in this, we're making a little money, maybe we should expand to the weapons that were used during the Han Dynasty period. So that seems to be why they moved over to the Dao, just to like, they, they're now offering the Dao like this was something else that was used during the Han Dynasty. I do think that they're probably going to be producing more Den. I don't know for sure, but that was the impression I was getting. But it seems like they're just trying to expand more to weapons used during that time period for you know people who are interested in that sort of historical um, framework. So, how thick is the spine? Um, we will find out when I actually do a full review. Um, and then, of course, this is when all the problems kept happening, and... Uh, da, 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 da. Damn, the kid is not limiting the deal. <laughs> hey, children. <laughs> That's what they do. They <laughs> oh, hold on. I think. Sorry, sorry. When your girlfriend sends you messages, you pay attention. That's what you do. Um. Hope it's nothing major. Yeah, but da, 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 da. Okay, I'm probably going to have to pick her up later. Alright, sorry guys, you didn't come here for this. Let's see some questions here. Someone's saying it's a spadroon, maybe it's a European doll. Ah, oh, somebody opened up a new fencing club in London. Check out our full contact DM matches, though you, um, though you might like it. Yeah, I would. I like watching, um, I just like watching sparring videos, period, especially when it comes to historical fighting and people trying to figure this stuff out. I'm always interested in that. Um, I just happen to like that we're seeing this, I don't want to call it a resurgence because this has been going on for, for some time now, but I just like seeing this growing interest on historical fighting, but putting it in a practical context, like, okay, we want to figure out how this stuff actually works. We're not just going to be doing this in this ritualistic, tradition-holding way. No. Warriors use this. Fighters use this. Duelists use this stuff practically. We want to do it this way, too. So let's figure this stuff out. I love that. No matter what your art is, I love that. 
Though I am, I mean, I know some people are going to be annoyed with me for saying this, but I honestly think that the HEMA guys and the, the Western martial arts guys in particular spearheaded this movement to push things more to a practical level. I know that there have been attempts in Asian martial arts to do the exact same thing, but they've been held back by other people who've been holding on to tradition for tradition's sake. Whereas on the Western side of things, they've, you know, they weren't held back by that at all because the tradition just wasn't really there anymore. So they were free to build something that would produce real skills. And I am really glad that they did it. I really am. Because it's that sort of mindset has now moved over to other martial arts. So, really, if anybody who happens... Like, for instance, um, was it James Chen and the Long Sword um, group? Um, the, I noticed the, the Chinese Long Sword website. They, that they've been producing um, reprints of manuals and they've been having a more practical approach to their training. Like, I'm glad those guys are around, but I have a feeling they wouldn't have been able to do that if the HEMA guys hadn't started it first. Or maybe they would have done it, but it probably would have taken them longer to get the... Um, just the uh, influence to do that, get the inspiration to do that. So, do you know how rough UPS can be with packages? Yeah. I have an almost biblical hatred for UPS at this point. Really. It's gotten to the point now where just about every time I have to deal with them, it never goes well. It just doesn't. I, I, I can't stand these people anymore. And it, it used to be good. Like I remember before, I used to never have any problems with them. It's been a complete 180. I, I don't want to rant. I'm going to move on from this. All right, a spiked handguard. These bucklers in that size. Oh, so there are small bucklers in that size. Okay. Thanks for informing me. I thought bucklers were a little bit bigger than those, but thanks for um, educating me on that. So, all right, P to the blind. No, these... <laughs> When I accidentally hit it. No, nope, they still hold up. I mean, we are missing some pieces over here, but that's because of little kitties bending things back when they're shirt. Um, you catch a blade like that on a cross guard. Yep. Dual wield. I knew somebody was going to talk about dual wielding the hook things. I'm sure somebody's done it at some point in time when they had no other choice. Your soldiers with a standard shield leaves me with the of the hook sword. Mm hmm. It looks like the tips of recurve bow without the string. Yep, there's kind of similar to that. Da, da, da. Civilian light. This one one seems to be good more without much problem. Says um, oh yeah, no, that was to somebody else. Da, 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 da. I really need somebody to moderate the chat, but I'm a small channel. I don't think about these things until it's too late. Spike shields in a buckler form and long swords form. Han shields are never flat. That's from London and Armory again. And that is. I'm sure. Okay, so hold on. I just saw something. Some. Um, I thought I saw a question. Then the thing just moved, so I lost it. Okay, some Reed was asking. Not an expert in Chinese warfare, but were shields widely used? Because the hook could be used to pry away the opponent's shield, just like the hooks on many halberds, bill hooks, and spears. In the past, yeah, shields were widely used. In fact, they were used even so far as up to the Ming Dynasty, though at, at that point they were being used a bit less, but they were still being used. If you look up, for instance, some of the military treatises written by General Qi Ji Guan, who's actually a famous general during the Ming Dynasty, you will see that he used to organize his troops with pole arms at a certain, like, he would put them in certain squads, and you would have the swordsmen over here, and the, the spearmen over here, and the guys with those crazy forked spears in the front and whatever but the guys that he had protecting them all had shields so again all the way up to the, even the Ming Dynasty we're seeing people with shield weapons the reason why we don't see that often is because at least when it comes to learning Chinese martial arts is because we're mostly when you, when you go to a typical Kung Fu school you're not really learning the military stuff per se you're looking at the civilian stuff and the population at large the giant the over the years, and you see this with every country, government always tries to find ways to limit what the civilians can get their hands on. This is just a fact of life. And people will always try to find ways to get around that. So, you're not allowed to have swords this long. 
Okay, well, if we just cut off by one centimeter, it's still shorter, right? You're not supposed to have blades this long. Okay, well, I know you're trying to limit our reach, but if we cut it down by one centimeter and make the handle this long, well, the blade's still not over. I, so it still counts, right? That sort of thing happens all the time. Especially um, with, um, if you look at the history of like the back and forth with, um, between the population and the government and the military like on what type of weapons people can use. That, it's sort of the reason why we see some of the weirder weapons later on, like weaponizing rakes, turning a shovel into a pole arm. Um, hell, even the, um, the podal, that was developed as a way of kind of circumventing rules. Oh, we're not allowed to have um, spears? Okay, what if I take my farming machete and attach <laughs> a freaking long pole to it? It's, it's, no, it's not a pole arm. I just need it for the extra reach to chop bushes. Seriously, that's what I need. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, I... I, I but yeah, to, to kind of get back on, you know, on the, the whole, you know, weapons front and using shields and all that. Yeah, that, when it comes to Chinese martial arts, you're looking at the civilian side of things. Which is why, you know, you go to your typical Kung Fu school, you're not going to be seeing training on how to properly fight in armor. You're not going to be seeing training on using some of the heavier shields that they've used. Like, when's the last time you've seen a Kung Fu school talk about how to use the G? Or later on, use it, we call, um, there's certain weapons that we call halberds now. Um... Okay, you know how the tiger hook sword, that kind of, that unique looking handle that they have, where you get that kind of moon blade on there? Y you guys have seen that one pole arm that seems to have the moon blades on either side? Those kind of like hooking halberds? That was a common military weapon for a period of time. You don't see any school teaching that, because that was a military weapon. They focus more on the stuff that they gave civilians. If you're teaching martial arts to the civilians, they're going to be like, yeah, only, you're only going to be using civilian weapons and civilian styles, and the military stuff's over here. So that, that's why, I get, if you want to, like, why don't we see the shields more often? Why don't we see these pole arms more often? That's why. All right, so. I'm right, taking the video down. I missed everything but the shields. Um, I'm not taking this video down. I tend to leave my live streams up. Like, once I'm done with the live stream, I just turn it off. And anybody who missed it, they should be able to see it on the channel. So anything you guys missed, including me bumbling around my keyboard because I thought the key, um, things cut off, no, the, you'll see it all. You'll see every embarrassing moment. Have I ever done video? This is by um, Moon Elf eighty two is asking if I've ever done videos or testing with the Bat Jam Doll, the, the Wing Chun um, butterfly swords. No, I have not. The reason why I haven't is one, I don't own a pair, and two, I've never had training with those weapons. At one time, I really wanted to, and I might have had the chance to do it. But then the guy who knew how to use them moved away, and I haven't been able to get in touch with them again. And that was so many years ago when I was still living in New York. So, yeah, that opportunity pretty much missed me. It would be nice to get a pair at some point just to talk about them, but I have no training in their use, and, you know, I don't own a pair at all, so that's why I've never really touched on them. Um, when exactly was the Han Dynasty? Well, that's what we got the answer box for. <laughs> so... Here, <laughs> might as well look it up online, right? During the, the Han Dynasty, though, is a rather interesting time because it's like okay, well, all right, basically, it was the Second Imperial Dynasty, and I believe it started in 206 BC, at least according to this, all the way up to 220 AD. That was pretty much the time period that it took place. And then after that, that's when we start getting into, you know, the warring states. So, well, let me look back into the questions, which are back here. So, what's up, Eberron? Oh, I knew somebody was going to ask this when I said I have to get back to cooking. Am I ever going to do any more cooking on a budget videos? Yes, I know I'm way overdoing those. Um, the problem is, I'm trying to think of the next dish to talk about. One of the issues that I'm dealing with with um, cooking on a budget is that it's not like... First of all, it's not like I'm a professional chef and doing a, a major cooking show, so you know, planning these out just right for interest is not a skill that I have. 
Another problem is that so many cooking shows, in order to do the stuff that they want you to, you know, like, oh, check out this dish. Check out this delectable food that we make. They're all expensive. You got to go for some crazy ingredients or, like, you know, get a whole lot of stuff you normally wouldn't buy to do them. Meanwhile, I'm trying to make a cooking show for people who, one, don't really know how to cook, but you people, you really, really, you, really, really, you guys need to learn how to cook, all right? Like, this is not, <laughs> this is not just some old dude talking to the young you guys don't know. No, no, seriously, this is a life skill. This will help keep you alive. This will help keep money in your pocket, which you need in order to pay your bills and live. You need to learn to cook. If, if most of the time you're just going out to like restaurants or buying fast food, you're not helping your health and you're definitely not helping your wallet. Learn to cook. There's so many freaking reasons. I need to make a video just on learn to cook, reasons why you should learn to cook. But when you are cooking and you're trying to cook on a budget, there's only so much that you can do. I'm not trying to say that you're going to be stuck eating the same things over and over and over again. But the things that I would be showing, yes, they're tasty. But I wouldn't necessarily call, like, they're not necessarily the things that you would see people talking about in the Food um, Network. You know what I mean? Like, it's this, like, I'd be showing rice and beans. I'd be showing, like, good, uh, cheaper ways to make pasta. Uh, um, ways to, like, you know, different ways of doing chicken dishes. Different ways of doing um, beef dishes. How you can stretch certain things out. Like, that's pretty much what the show would be about. And I don't know how long something like that would keep people's interest. So I'm sitting here thinking, what should my next show be? Though, if I'm going to be honest, I really should just stop waffling and just, just do something. Because something is better than just simply worrying about it and doing nothing. But that's been the main hang-up, by the way, of me. Like, the reason why it has been a while since I've done another show. Because the last one I did was pretty much just on the practicalities on the staples you should get. And after I'd done that, I was thinking, okay, well, if I gave them the staples, what the hell else is there for me to say? But they're probably, I mean, the fact that some people want me to do another video tells me that there's probably more that I could say. I won't know until I do it, so. But they're, they're coming, I just gotta, like, figure out the right angle to come at it with. And I definitely want to focus a little bit more on the cheaper side of things. Because, like, the last couple of things I did, like, for instance, red curry. I love making red curry, but not everybody is, not, like, it's, you can do it for cheap. You can. You just gotta know how to do it and where to get your ingredients from. And that n might not be something that everybody would be able to do. I'm lucky. I happen to live... Like, where I live, there are a lot of Asian markets. And I can get this stuff at a pretty good price. Not everybody has that luxury. You're forced to have to get your red sauces or your green curry sauces or wherever else from a supermarket that's going to overcharge you for it. So I'm. these are the things that i got to think about when I'm doing... You know, when I'm making those videos. Like, i got to come up with something that most people are going to be able to get their hands on at a price that isn't going to kill their wallets. And honestly, that's the main reason why I want to do those videos. Like, people need to learn how to get, you You know, they need to acquire the life skills in order to support themselves, especially young people. But they also have to do it in a way that isn't going to kill their freaking budget. We're living in an economy where the prices of everything is going up and up and up and up and up. Just to feed yourself is becoming a liability, which is ridiculous. So I, I, I want to try to find, you know, ways to, like, help people. Like, look, you don't need to spend this much. You can spend this much and still make something that's going to, you know, feed you and your family and, you know, not be a burden to you. So those are the motivations for me doing those videos, and I just got to, like, come up with the right way to put them out. So, yep, that was on that. Um, okay, um, George Coffee is asking about wouldn't the swords be bronze or iron? I'm assume, assuming you're talking about the weapons from the Han Dynasty. Yes and no. It is true that the earlier weapons were made of bronze and iron. But toward the end, toward the latter half of the Han Dynasty, they were working with steel. That's actually one of the marvels of earlier Chinese weaponry. They were working with steel before everyone else was. So they were making these... In fact, that's the reason why they really started falling in love with the Dian, because they were finally able to make these nice, long, narrow, but super sharp, strong weapons... And, you know, with steel, and everyone else was still working around with bronze and, and so on, or, you know, earlier iron. So the weapons were really good. They were nice and long and elegant looking, and there was a whole culture that built up around them. And, you know, before later on, guys came on horses and started chopping them up with single-edged weapons, and they're like, okay, now, now we need to move over the doll. But 
the point is, they were working with steel toward the end of the Han Dynasty onwards. And that's when you really started seeing, at least in L.K. Chen's words, like the, their weapons, especially the Jin, at its zenith in terms of its construction. I know some people might disagree. Uh, as, far, as far as, you know, some people say, what about this development? But I can understand why he would say that when you kind of consider that some of the longest Jin were being used during the Han Dynasty. Nowadays, when people think of a Jen, they're thinking of a weapon that has a 28-inch blade, maybe a 30-inch blade, that's it. And if they're thinking of two-handed Jen, the longest they tend to push the blade lengths on those is 34, maybe 36 inches. Remember, the one earlier quote-unquote Han Jen I had, which is a two-handed sword, the blade's only 32 inches. Meanwhile, in the Han Dynasty, they're using one-handed swords with 36-inch blades. So that's basically what they mean when they're saying that the Jen was at its zenith back then. They were able to make these longer, lighter, sharp weapons, but then as time goes on, now you're getting these shorter weapons that aren't necessarily as nicely balanced. <laughs> Though that could also be according to preference. So, yeah. But yeah, to answer the question, yeah. yeah um, earlier in the Han Dynasty, they were working with bronze weapons and earlier iron weapons, but toward the end, they were working with steel. So, but da, 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 da. Says, is there any time you touch the blade with your offhand during a form an opportunity to half sword? Possibly. I don't know of much, like, half sorting, you tend to see a lot more with the doll. And not necessarily, like, okay, hold on. Yeah. Which one of these should I pull out? You know what? This was a gift from Skull, so I'll use this. Okay, so let's just, you know, it's supposed to be a den. And, um, and when I see people using the den traditionally, I never see this, ever. Whenever they're using it with two hands, it's always going to be here. And, you know, of course, they get into this dance like that. They almost never go like this. I, I've never seen any um, den user put their hands here for any half, um, you know, half sorting. However, not, let's now pretend that this is a doll. It's not, but just use your imagination. I have seen with the doll, them then putting their hands here or here or here. They don't necessarily grip it, but they will put their hands there to like put extra pressure on a blow or to redirect. So I guess, I mean, in a loose sort of way, I guess you can kind of call that half sorting, but they it's always like this. Like I've, I've always seen it like this, maybe this, never this. And especially with a gen, not, they don't even do that for obvious reasons. You know, unless they really didn't like their hands or their hands are made of iron or something. But I've never seen that technique with that. Okay, so... All right, so it is now 6.15 over here. And I really need to get started with cooking. And I'm sure some of you guys go, why don't you just put the camera on that? Well, because I don't have a camera that can move over there. At least not yet. Um, I really do, do need to do a food video again. I really do. But mm, I do need to, I need to feed the child. I need to feed myself. I haven't had anything at all today except for this Arizona. And, well, there was the, the cheeseburger omelet I made this morning. But you know what? That would make a good food video. Because that actually wasn't all that expensive, believe it or not. Like, if you've, like, had hamburgers the night before, and you still got a couple of the patties left, you can save the patties, right? Chop that up for the next morning, if, if you're willing to make a really fattening breakfast. You get your eggs, whip that up, and make a nice omelet out of that, and then you take your, your cut-up pieces of the beef patties, and put that into your omelet, and, of course, some chopped onions, some cheese, um maybe some scallions, fold that over like you would with an omelet, and you've just made a cheeseburger omelet. And if you know how to get eggs on the cheap, which you should, it's really freaking good. So, anti armor thing like in Europe, it would be hard to find. I'm sorry, I just said every time George Coffey puts up a statement, I have to stop and read it. He always puts up something interesting. <laughs> If they do have sorting with them, it would be hard to find it in the surviving forms as there were civilian stuff, and civilians usually didn't armor up. True. Definitely true. And not only that, but you, another thing about the civilian population, at least in earlier forms, like, 
these days we take reading for granted. These days we take li basic educational literacy for granted. That was not like that in so many different countries in ancient times. And especially when you, if you were like a civilian martial artist, you most likely didn't know how to read. Being able to pass this stuff down was always oral. And if you weren't an established master, nobody was really going to give a damn about what your skills were. So a lot of stuff just died with you. And even when you were somebody established and you were going to be able, okay, I want to pass my techniques down. Even the masters weren't necessarily able to know how to read. They had to go to somebody else to write their stuff down for them. And maybe the person writing the stuff down didn't fully understand what the hell they were saying. Like, wait, what? Move your waist? How? Because like, they weren't a martial artist. And this is a lot of the reasons why there are very few manuals from earlier dynasties. And the few that you do find are usually just like single images with some short text on the side that doesn't really tell you anything unless you already know what the style is and what the movements are. And in that case, the book is more of a reference for you, not an instructional aid. So with that sort of atmosphere, yeah, a lot of techniques are just going to be lost, and we just got to figure out, well, how could this have been used? So yeah, a lot of techniques have been lost, but this isn't to say that we can't rediscover them. In fact, a lot, I've said this before, a lot of styles that people are practicing nowadays in terms of Chinese martial arts are reconstructions. If you study Pi Guajang, that's a reconstruction. If you, I know some people, no, no, this style came from ancient. It's a reconstruction. You study Xing Yi Chuan, that's a reconstruction. Sorry. It, 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 no, 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 it's a reconstruction. Look back in the past and see the version, like there might have been a version before, like in the ancient times made by some founder. But there's always going to be some break somewhere, some time period where they're like, oh, then we lost it. And then some new guy showed up and like, I found it again. That's when it got reconstructed. That's when it got reorganized. Tongbei, you see that. Pi Guajang, you see that. Fan Zichuan, you see that. <laughs> they just keep getting redone. It's like, it's funny how many, like, I remember traditional martial artists used to look down on the Hema guys. You guys are just making it up. Like, your tradition got broken, so now you guys are having to refigure it out. Well, what do you think's going on with your art? <laughs> what do you think's happened to your art? And what do you think is happening right now? You think that um, the MMA guy's going around beating up people over um, the fake masters in China? You think that isn't going to have repercussions? You don't think that there aren't going to be certain masters looking at going, we need to incorporate their techniques. It's going to happen, and the styles are going to get reconfigured again because this always happens. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, but da, 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 da. So thanks for the fours. Uh, okay, look. Two uh, Wu Beiji military preparation manuals from 1621. Check it out. The foot of two handed. Yeah, I've heard of that one before. And it's actually is an interesting little book. But all right, all right, all right. Damn it! I'm gonna be here forever if I don't um cut off. Before I cut off, though, um. Two things, well, more than two things. One, there is a couple of videos I need to hurry up and put up. One of them is half edited. The other bunch is just raw footage that I need to hurry up and get up. I need to hurry up and get some stuff out this November. I am really sorry I've been uh, having a very low output of stuff. I don't blame you guys if you're annoyed. I really don't. But I am going to be pumping out at least another video or two soon. Um, the next um, thing I want to talk about, okay, I know I keep bringing this up. And it's probably a broken record at this point. You guys are probably rolling your eyes, but damn it! One of these days, I really want to set up a kind of video game thing where we just, like, people who have the same game, we all come in and have fun playing it. I really want more people to play Tekken 7 with. I want to do, like, a mini, fun, just be goofy tournament, mini tournament for Tekken 7. Like, just at least eight people. It's just like me and seven other people jump in and then just trash talk each other and have fun with that and just, and, and just go to town with it. If you've got Tekken 7 on PC, please, please, just get Get, get in touch with me. Or if, if you've got Killing Floor 2 on PC, please get in touch with me. Um, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that further later, but there are a bunch of multiplayer games I have that I would love to play um, against with more people. Of course, I need to find more time to do it, but after Christmas, that will definitely open up. And even before then, then things might open up with that, but th that's that. Finally, um, I'm probably going to be selling another katana. Um, I just got... I got swords that I need to get rid of. And um, there's another one that I would like to just toss out. 
I would pull it out now, but it's in the back room. Um, if anyone's interested at all, just let me know. Um, private message me or whatever. And I'll show you what it looks like, whatever. We can talk price. I've sold these before. Um, I just got stuff that I need to get rid of. And this particular one's a nice piece, but I got no use for it. So if anybody wants some, uh, was interested, let me know. Um, yeah, yeah, like I said, Tekken 7. If any of you guys play Tekken 7 on freaking PC, please, 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 dear gods, please. Or not even, hell, even Street Fighter Five. There was a dude that I used to play with. I don't know if he's still around. He was on PS4 on Street Fighter Five, and I played against him on PC. He was pretty good. Um, we had some really good matches. Um, I should probably try to set something up with that again, but Tekken 7 has become my game. God, I love it. I've been playing Tekken since the first one. I've, I've been hooked on Tekken ever since. Like, I've played the first Tekken, thought it was I. then Tekken 2 came out, and that was it. I was sold. And I've been playing every version of ever ever since. And 7 has just been my main fighting game to play. I got a bunch of others. I do have Soul Calibur 6. I got Street Fighter 4 and 5. I got the latest King of Fighters. I, you know, I got games, but the one that I keep coming back to over and over again is Tekken 7. So. Um, I should be cutting off, but somebody's asking the one question that I knew sooner or later I was going to get hit with, so I'll answer this one question, and I'll cut off. And it's, have I studied how Indian martial arts influenced the Chinese? Yes, I have. And the thing that I struggle to try to explain to people is that there has been an influence, but not in the way that people think. Usually whenever I hear people talking about the influence of Indian martial arts, the Chinese, they tend to frame it in a way that it was the Indian martial arts that developed, like, if it wasn't for Indian martial arts, it wouldn't be Chinese martial arts, and, like, it evolved from Indian martial arts, and the proof is that Shaolin, you know, is a Buddhist temple, and Buddhism came from India, and the Buddhist priests and monks from India had come over there and taught them, and that's not true! As I've already stated, Chinese martial arts didn't originate in Shaolin. People were already fighting before Shaolin showed up. For God's sakes, we got recreations of weapons right here that were being used and existed way before Shaolin showed up. They had their own, by then they were already coming up with their own sword forms and dance moves and stuff like that. We just looked at the freaking hook shields that they were using. These are not Shaolin things. So to use the Shaolin link to say that, oh, well it all originated from Indian martial arts. It's not true. It is so completely a faulty argument. Now to say that there is no interconnection between Indian martial arts and Chinese is also false. There is crossover. Especially when you start looking more on the western side of China. And you start looking at staff fighting techniques and you start seeing some similarities there. Not to mention that, of course, cultural influences yogic pra um, practices and all that did make its way into Chinese martial arts. So there is an influence that you can see there. And I would, I, I really need to put all my notes together to make a video on that. that would be, I think people would really like it. But yeah, yeah, there is an influence from Indian martial arts into Chinese ones. The problem I find is when people are trying to say that Indian martial arts is what found, is what created Chinese martial arts. That's not true. Um, and to say that the link came through Shaolin, that's not true. I mean, if I could ask one simple question. Um, there should be records in India of um, great Buddhist fighters that went over there. I haven't heard of any. If you guys have, let me know. But I personally have not heard of it. Um, okay, that, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, I got to cut up. Got to go. Um, and then somebody says, Guilty Gear is their jam. Private message me. I have Guilty Gear Revelator and x -Erd. I just haven't been able to fully get into it yet because I haven't had somebody to help me get grapple with the system. I definitely wouldn't mind somebody helping me to master the system of that game. I, I used to play the hell out of the first Guilty Gears, but I've kind of fell off the wagon. And now that I've jumped back in, I feel like there's a lot that I need to relearn. So get at me at some point. All right, enough, enough. I keep saying I'm going to cut off. Have them cut off. You can tell I'm not a professional. Hope you guys um, enjoyed the unboxing. Um, there's definitely going to be a video on these soon, um, as well as the other ones that I already have that I need to finish editing. Um, hope you guys have a great night, and I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Nice.